Hi, it's Paul Feuerstein here, Technology Editor of Dentistry Today, and I'm, I have the pleasure of sitting here with Joel, Joel Carafin. Joel is the Chief XDR. Operating Officer at XDR Radiology, and people say, XDR Radiology? What is XDR Radiology? This is XDR Radiology. <laughs> XDR Radiology is a wonderful company, has a terrific sensor, and we're here to talk about the sensor and the company and tell you why you should know a lot about this. So Joel, let's talk about the company a little bit. A little bit. Give me a little bit of briefing on the company. Well, the company was founded in year 2000, incorporated in 2003, uh, by mathematicians and dentists. And uh, we think that sort of sets us apart. The, uh, the mathematical aspects, the, the people behind the scenes are unbelievable. I mean, they're writing all the uh, algorithms for the, for the uh, sensors, they're writing the algorithms for the software. It's quite something. And what you've done, what I've seen that we've done is it's a very different sensor, a very different software that's in the marketplace, and people have to be more understand what you're doing here. And that really does seem to matter. In peer-reviewed research published in Quad O, um, it, it's, it shows that it's not just the hardware that matters, but it's the hardware-software combination that matters, getting the most out of the sensor and its ability to capture data, and of course, the best processing of that data to present the image. So Joel, um, when you have the software and we're looking at the images, we can do some sharpening. And is it just one type of sharpening? Is it just like a sharpening filter, or is it more complicated than that? Well, we did different levels of the same style of sharpening, but we wanted to do more. We're seeing uh, more and more practices come from other pieces of software, and they're used to their styles of sharpening. Uh, CareStream, Dexas, um, they both do some significant sharpening, and we wanted to be able to mimic that to make doctors feel more at home, maybe make it a little better. Um, and so now we have configurable sharpening uh, in the software itself. The doctor is presented with uh, sample images, bite wings, posterior PAs, and so on. And then they can move slider bars around on various parameters and make that sharpening look exactly the way they want. And, and so the images will turn out looking exactly with that kind of uh, treatment that they're looking for. And you can configure up to three styles. Well, would, would it be different if I was doing endo and doing operative and, and something like that? Exactly it. Uh, you can walk between those different styles to treat various different kinds of images. And that's why you have those different kinds of samples in the configurator. So it's sort of be enhancing the apex in the endo system. I'd be looking at the interproximals with the, with the caries detection, things like that. You could be doing that. Generally speaking, endodontists, they love to, they turn that thing up. They just love they want it. To see the, they want to see that periodontal ligament. They want to see the Oh, yes. they want it to bounce. They want it to pop. They really do. <laughs> yeah. Um, of course, that's in addition to other kinds of filters that, yeah. that are special uh, in that they make the most out of the high density regions of the radiograph. Oh, Sacrifice other things, but really give that endodontist or a general dentist doing an endo a real good look at that high density area. And then the opposite number, a perio filter that brings out uh, all the data available in the low density regions. Would you program it so you have one type for a specific procedure or, or mentally do it that way? Or? You, um, you could certainly do it that way. You can name them yourselves and call on them uh, yourself as you desire. So what do you mean by three sharpening systems? It's the three different styles. Uh, an interface is presented where you have some sample radiographs so you can see what the effect of the various sharpening mechanisms are. And then you start adjusting slider bars to configure just the way you want that particular style to affect your images. Maybe that would be your endo image. And then next you might uh, look more carefully at the bite wing and create a style of sharpening just to suit yourself as you're looking at your bite wings and so on. So if you're looking for caries, you're looking, using one sort of parameter. If you're looking yes. for the uh, apex of a tooth or yes. periapical radi uh, radiolucencies, things like that would be slightly different. And of course, that's in addition to the filters we have available for those particular situations, high density, low density, a perio filter, an endo filter. In addition, you can have these various styles of sharpening. So as I have XDR's radiology software, can that be integrated into other systems, my practice management system? Absolutely. We've never come across a practice management system we couldn't connect to. We've simply never come across one. In fact, uh, Mac Practice um, is just announcing with us that there's a new tight bridge between our pieces of software. Oh, the Mac people will be thrilled with that. We hope so. <laughs> so this can be actually, so you can now have a Mac system and have XDR radiology. For now, we're still operating within a parallels environment. That's right, that's fine. Uh, but, but the bridge is going to be sound there, and the capturing will be sound, and, and, and we're moving forward with Mac practice with other ventures so as well. So if I integrate with another process, let's just say Dentrix, for example, uh -huh. do I lose the XDR softening, uh, uh, sharpening, things like that? Not at all. In fact, uh, not only is it a one-click bridge into XDR imaging software, but then we have a floater so that you can bring that imaging back and let it float over the Dentrix screen while you're doing your charting. 
and have full access to all those kinds of uh, image filtering capabilities. So there's no limitations. Well, uh, we like to think that. We like to think that we're best of breed. Yeah. We focus on what we're good at. We're a very open architecture. We'll work with anybody. Um, and uh, we try to be agnostic as to things like practice management systems and things like that. That's really something. Um, now, the sensor itself has a certain shape to it. Uh, it's anatomically designed somehow, and I understand it's patented? Yes, absolutely. It's our own design, uh, so no one else is going to have this particular design. And besides, of course, the dramatically rounded corners, uh, besides the white face, so it's easier to see intraorally, uh, there's a smooth button on the back, so it's much easier to clean, no crevices. Of course, the cord is replaceable. Of course, you can immerse it in cold sterilants, all those things. But what really made the patent was the, uh, the imaging area at this mesial edge when you're taking a bite wing. The idea is this. The, um, the DEXA sensor has about a, roughly speaking, a three and a third millimeters of dead space right here on this edge, area that is not going to be in the radiographic field. It's just not. Uh, the uh, Schick 33 has about four millimeters of dead space along that edge, and the Carestream has five millimeters of dead space along that edge. Ours is two millimeters of dead space, and what's the difference? Anyone who's had trouble getting the distal of the canine in that premolar bite wing is going to know that they don't want dead space along that edge. We've minimized it, we have a patent on it, uh, it returns to the film standard of what that dead space should be. So, the, so when the dentist who's used to film realizes that the entire film is taking the image, whereas when you have electronics, the electronics takes up some room around the perimeter. And that's just the nature of, the, of sensors themselves. We remove that issue so that the only thing left is shock absorption processes. Shock absorption? Yes. Well, it's a delicate thing in there, and you don't want to bang the sensor too much. But we do what we can to prevent damage even in shock. Now, if I want to purchase this, do I go to a large distributor, or are you working directly with you? Yes, directly with us. Um, the company What's was... the advantage of that? Well, we're, we're, we're doctors and engineers, we're, we're mathematicians, and uh, it's owned by such people, and so our priorities are a little different. Uh, rather than paying an army of salesmen to go across the country, we think it makes a lot more sense to deal directly with us. We understand clinically, technically what's going on. We'll have real conversations with you, um, and it avoids a lot of cost to the dentist not to have to pay for the salespeople. Also, um, we don't have quarterly reports to shareholders to worry about. We just don't. And so we can take the earnings and put it back into research. We can approach universities with more clinical seriousness than they may experience from some of our competitors. Uh, we can keep an open architecture because we don't have a corporate command to only work with our stuff. We, we, we're happy to work with anybody and, and, and everybody. And speaking of that, um, well, there can be some dispute about this, but what we like to think is that when any, whenever anyone calls us, they're going to be happy they called. Uh, we're going to be on the phone and we're going to try to work with you. We're going to have a good attitude. Well, it's your baby. We're there for you. <laughs> it is our baby. And, and we push that through the organization. Um, so whether you're, whether you're a customer or not, whether you're in the market or not, uh, whether you're really happy with the software and just want to learn the next level of clinical depth, or whether you're having a problem and need help or training, you're always happy you call. And for service and support, there are no layers to go through. I'm going directly to you. Oh, uh, absolutely. Um, not only that, your phone is being answered by a human being, first of all. Uh, and then they, they quickly discover whether you need clinical help or technical help or if it's just a customer service issue. And you can dial into their, their, their offices anyway. You can dial into their computers. At, we remote on in, do the support across the country. It's, it's, that's known technology now. You have an internet connection and someone who can use a browser, you're set. That's great. And so as you've evolved this whole system, what's next for XDR? Well, we want to take that, uh, that, that basic that basic fundament of having dentists and mathematicians and, uh, and make it clear to people that they don't have to put up with corporate entities. Yeah? Um, you can call... Like you're telling me from the 60s. Well, you can call... <laughs> I'm afraid I... Okay. Uh, you, you can call XDR and be happy you have the conversation. Whether you're a customer or not, whether you end up buying from us or not, or whether you're having a problem and need it resolved, you'll always be happy you called us. It'll always be a pleasant conversation. We make book on that. That's really important to us. Um, and so that's what's, can, that's what's now and will continue into the future. As far as what's really new, uh, well, uh, we talked about the configurable sharpening. Sure. Uh, in the next version, which will come out in a few months, we're going to be providing next level sharpening. 
When you take a look at the sharpening provided by our competitors and up until now us, you'll see that when you do it significantly, you get little bumps, little sort of granularity in the image. We're going to do away with that granularity and you're going to be shocked at how good these images can look. So that's coming up soon. It's going to be cool. Um, what we have right now is we're just releasing with TDO Endo. Uh, we're fully integrated into TDO Endo so that uh, uh, those practices can get the full benefit of all the XDR filtering techniques uh, and the images are taken right into TDO. There's no bridge or anything like that. That's fantastic. So if I wanted more information, obviously there's a website. Let me guess, it's XDR Radiology? XDRradiology.com. Two R's, XDR Radiology. That's right, two R's right next to each other. And you can go to the science and engineering pages on that site. Oh, with the research. Uh, we, we've got some research that we show there, whether it's ours or not, you know, we, we try to put some information on there. And you'll, you can learn about how we do well in Citrix environments. Uh, you, can do, uh, you can find out how we're intending to integrate CBCT images into our database. And, um, and we're going to be furthering our work with Mac Practice. And uh, anyone who's willing to partner, for, partner with us will be willing to partner with them. That's fantastic. Joel, unbelievable. Thanks for talking to me. Absolutely. Thank you.